Welcome everyone to Product One's YouTube web series. I'm your host Tulani, and today we're going to be looking at some of the use cases of Creo Simulation Live. We have done a video of Creo Simulation, in fact, numerous videos in the past. If you have not seen those, please check them out and do not forget to subscribe. Let's get started. What I have here is an assembly inside Creo 7.0. So this assembly is not complete and purely because I'm having a support structure here that's supposed to hold up that one cylinder engine. As you can see, this part is not complete. I've left it incomplete for the sake of this demo because I've got an array of shapes which I need to explore just to show a typical process in the design environment. So I can choose to populate this design here in part mode or just do it within the assembly. So many people always like to work within the assembly because they get to see the surrounding geometry and the impact thereof. So what I'm going to do in this instant is, I'm going to say, I'm already having this predefined sketch. All I have to do is just add these parametric features. So all that I'm doing is using the normal Creo parametric features and I'm having my sketch. So this will be the end of it. And if this is now my final design, this unfortunately will be the designer taking this into the analyst to run a simulation or structural analysis. This is actually unfortunate because many people look at the structural or simulation as something that you do at the end of the product development process when you're validating the design. What PDC and ANSYS did, they, look at the, they looked at this and said, how about we empower the designer that while they're busy designing, they can make informed decisions. So rather than sending this out to an analyst, you, you get charged for that service or the person has to wait for the results to come back. The designer can actually do this inside Creo Parametric, start up Creo Simulation Live, Apply the load condition. So based on that assembly, you can see that the surface has to be fixed. And the load will come in that particular surface. And that's probably the magnitude. So I've got the magnitude and I can even define my, my units there. Before I even showcase the results, let's say for this type, or for this analysis, we are told that the ultimate yield strength of this material is 10 megapascals. So we're not supposed to exceed 10 megapascals. This is now inside Creo parametric. All I have to do is show me the results, and I think you're now familiar due to the fact that you are using a GPU to render this, you get to see the stress level plot, and you see the value of the stress immediately. So instead of sending this to an analyst, they do the, the analysis, they send you a series of recommendations, you make those changes and send it back to them, you pay them again, you can do the following inside PO Simulation Live. You can say, how about I explore this shape and make it diagonal, maybe that will be stronger. I get to see that that's not the good uh, idea because I can see that the stress is actually 48 megapascals instead of 10, which is what we want. I can now explore other shapes as well. I can say, how about I make the wall vertical? If you see there, the stress is 15.7. That means that that's on the right track. I can say, how about we choose Shape number four, for argument's sake, you see there that the stress in shape number four, it's 50 megapascals. So I've gone through a series of iterations or options that are available to me, and I get to see what is the stress implication. Let's say hypothetically, that's the shape that I'm opting to stick with. The concern I have with this shape is, there's a high degree of stress that's distributed in this region over here. I can get rid of that maybe by adding a fillet. Let's see. If I add a fillet onto that geometry, I get to see what's the implication 
of that. You see that the stress has moved from 16 to 14. That means that these changes are now starting to take effect. I can say maybe that's also a spot of border. How about we add a feature like a chamfer and maybe even specify the values thereof. Whatever change that I'm making, the system automatically renders the results of that. And as you can see, there's little or no change. Maybe because I've actually pushed where the stress surface is located. Maybe it will be of benefit if I add a support structure that will link those two faces. So I will be utilizing a feature called rib feature. And what I will do is I'm going to be creating a structure that is linking those two faces. All that I need to do is specify the length or the web of this, and I can even go as far as specifying the thickness. So let's leave it at 4.4. It doesn't matter the size. Now, as soon as I implement that change, I get to see that, oh, there's a high stress here now. And that is a lot higher because it's concentrated in a small area. So how about we take this area and spread it out and maybe increase that by utilizing some of the, the features that I have. So in this instance, I want to duplicate that support. So then I get to see what's the impact of that duplication. As you can see, it has now pushed the stress to 11.5, still slightly higher. However, now I can say, how about I increase this geometry here and see what will be the impact of that in my stress. And if you can see there, I'm having a stress of 4.9 megapascals instead of 11. And I can say now that's the shape that I want and I know that it works because of the stress range. And you can take this component now for high fidelity analysis. That means that you only do that whole process of sending it to an analyst to refine only once. So from the design perspective, I'm now having this shape. There's a couple of things that I can choose to do. I can make that component symmetrical and assemble it on the other side or just simply select the component in this instance and say, how about I mirror this component and even preview that as well. And that is the power of Creo Simulation Live. And that is it from my side. Please do not forget to subscribe and like the videos and leave comments below. Until next time, goodbye.